on little Wi-Fi. Okay. Hi everyone. Um, so I want to talk about something. I came across a Instagram post yesterday and the caption said, I found peace when I stopped asking God to change other people and asked him to transform me. And when I, I definitely do not think I came across that picture and that caption on accident because I just felt it in my spirit. Oh my gosh, this is what I've been talking about. When we, when we're talking about self-awareness, that is exactly, that, that is just the epitome of self-awareness is understanding your emotions, how you're vetting and qualifying people to be in your life and you're taking responsibility for things that are happening in your life and the way that you allow people to treat you. I'm not gonna say the way people do treat you, but the, what you allow, it is because of you. And you, we need to start taking accountability for that. And so like in my last video, when I was talking about, you know, how are you, you know, uh, people that come into your life, a lot of times, you, you know, you can't, um, you can't really control who approaches you, who comes up to you, who presents themselves to you, but you can control who you decide to keep around you. And that we have to start taking accountability for that. And it takes self-awareness to say, okay, um, I don't have a, a, a vetting and qualifying process. I just entertain whoever. But that needs to be addressed, though, and we'll get to that in a second. Or you can say, um, you know, I, I, I have a problem with implementing boundaries and setting and establishing boundaries because I'm afraid that I'll be lonely or I'm afraid of rejection. So a lot of times when we have issues with boundaries and things like that it does come from fear from fear of being alone but what i really want y'all to understand is that it's better to be alone than to be surrounded by people who don't respect you or your boundaries because now you have settled okay if you have high self-esteem and you hold yourself to a high regard you respect yourself you understand no my boundaries and my standards deserve to be respected and this is how i'm going to require people in my life to treat me and if you're not treating me that way then you don't get the benefits of being in my life it, i mean it's just so it's so simple it starts with understanding it starts with having high self-esteem understanding your worth understanding your value as a human being understanding that you're beautifully uniquely made and understanding that okay look everyone that you come across isn't even gonna have the ability to see how valuable and amazing you are and that's okay and that's great anyway because you don't want everybody to be around you anyway you're too unique you're too different you've worked on yourself and that's what i want to talk about too when we're talking about like things like self-awareness these are things that are not easy we're talking about how you're qualifying people to be into your life and really doing some self-reflection and really doing the work on yourself. This is stuff that is not easy. And this is not for everyone. And I, I've actually heard people say, I know I need to do work on myself, but I just don't want to do it. Or maybe, you know, they're not in a point where in their life where they want to do it yet. But I'm in a point in my life where this is just what really speaks to me. But it's very hard to to like it's important to have someone around you that's going to hold you accountable for this process for doing the work because the work is hard the work is it, it i mean it's it's uncomfortable but i feel like when you do things that are uncomfortable that's the only way you can really grow like people that don't want to do the work they stay in, in a comfort zone like they're doing what's comfortable for them they're doing what's easy for them but then they are confused about why are my results in life not on this higher level well it's because you're you're at this mediocre level where you don't want to do the work you know you don't want to change you don't want to grow you don't want to do the hard things but like higher results higher outcomes it takes more discipline it takes hard work and dang i definitely just want attention um so it's important to have someone that's going to hold you accountable. Like it definitely is. And I try to be that person to hold you all accountable. If you're on a journey where you're trying to do the work and grow and change. Because I feel like it's two types of people in life. You Either you're trying to grow and change 
and become more aware as a human being so that you can treat yourself better and treat others better. You're trying to, you know, become closer to God, to, to your creator, understand who Jesus is, understand who Christ is, how he walks, his character, how he walked, his character. You trying to do that or you're just not. I mean, it's really just no, like there's really no in between there. Um, you're either on that side of the spectrum or in the spectrum where you're like, look, you're on autopilot. You know, you're going with the flow. You're taking whatever comes. You know, you're not, you're not, you're not aware at all of, of of your emotions, of the way you're acting, of your triggers, none of that. But if you're on the other side, I mean, you are trying to become aware of your emotions and of your triggers, and you're constantly working on yourself, which can be a very hard process. And I think, for me, well, first I'll talk about like, yeah, having someone that's going to hold you accountable is important because most people aren't doing this. So, like, most people, I think it's like only 85 to 90 percent of people are self no okay only oh wait let me that's not how you say it only 10 to 15 percent of people are like doing the work on themselves to become self-aware which means that like mostly everybody is not doing this work and so you can feel very different you can feel kind of isolated like i'm doing this by myself but um like so and steady wins the race and also okay like you can't it's also important to not compare compare yourself because i kind of look at it like okay you know it's like you see people it looks like they're winning or they're doing so well in life and stuff like that but you don't know what they're battling on the inside you don't know what trauma they're still you know attaching to how they're still reacting emotionally like i think self-awareness is like like the quote said, it just brings this so much peace. Like if you have that, you can, I mean, everything else is just going to stem from that because it's your mindset and how you're going about everything and in your life. I mean, this is your life and you're in control of, of, of certain parts of your life. The parts of your life that you can control, work on controlling those things so that you can at least know that you did the work on yourself to create the best life possible. Like if, like, I, you deserve to live the best life possible. If you're going to be here on earth, why not live the best life possible? Why settle? I genuinely don't understand it. We only have one life to live. Why settle for something that you know is below your standards and below God's best for you? Why settle for that? That is self-sabotage. And I was going to say, even with this, with this process and me on my journey, I can tend to be kind of hard on myself because it's a, like I said, it's not easy. And when you start to become a little bit more self-aware, it can, it, I can sometimes be like, be hard on myself and be like, why did I do that? I mean, after all this time, all this work, work, I mean, there's a difference there too, that I've done. Why did I still allow this? How did I still, why am I still having, why am I still subscribing to this mindset? Why am I still struggling with this? But it's a process. You can't be hard on yourself with it. And the work never, ever ends. It never ends. It, it continues. And the reason I said work like this is that we have to remember that when we're doing the work, it's an active process. I mean, like you need to be actively showing up for yourself and working on yourself to doing some deep reflection, healing, forgiving people that hurt you in your past recognizing what you did wrong recognize like that's active work it's going to be much easier to you to avoid doing that but it'll be worth it in the long run so i just want to encourage you if you made it to this point in the message then clearly you know i want to encourage you to remember to take a look within try to really objectively take a look within and admit your issues that you need, your issues and what is not working so well for you put your ego aside put your pride aside and do that so you can work on that and have better life outcomes and it is not your job to ask god to change anyone because everybody else is on their own journey between them and god so i mean and a lot of times what you're trying to change in someone else they don't even recognize as a flaw within themselves so now you just wasted energy <laughs> instead of you know trying to change them what's wrong with them no what's wrong with you why have you even gotten to this point 
Um, so yeah, I want to encourage you. And the other last thing I'll say is a lot of times when I'm talking about accountability partner, a lot of times it needs to be someone objective, someone that's not, a, you know, you can have friends and family that, you know, encourage you, but your friends and family, they know you and love you, which is great. But the one that's really going to keep is it can be hard for the ones that love us to really point out our flaws because they want to empathize with us. They want to blame the other person when really it was some of the mistake that you made. But because they love you, it can be hard for them to do that. But the person that's going to keep it real with you is going to be you. You. I'm talking to myself. You. I'm talking to you. You. That you are the only one that can really take a deep look within. Put your pride aside. You know, go on the spiritual journey and um, admit what your issues are and the things that you need to work on. And stop thinking that it's everyone else and that you're so perfect and that, oh, you know, everyone else is so flawed. And no, 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 <laughs> Because like I was listening uh, today on a podcast, you're the common denominator in these cases. Same case, different phase. But you're still the common denominator, the same one getting hurt. Clearly, that's where that needs to be done. So get an accountability partner, you know, for this. Understand that the work is not easy. Surround yourself with people that are also on a journey of trying to do this work because most people that you're coming across in your day-to-day -day life are not. Most people that you see on social media are definitely not. So, um, because they're just like, I mean, this is everyone else. So, so have an accountability partner. Understand that this journey is between you and God, you and your creator. And it really doesn't matter what anybody else really has to say, really, except, you know, what you think. And like, do you think that whatever you're doing or, you know, does it like would god approve of it like have that mindset try to you know get god's approval in what you're doing not your friends and family necessarily because they love you i mean of course they're gonna you know they're not gonna keep it necessarily real all the time um but you gotta get real you gotta get real you gotta just you gotta get real you know what i mean so Thank y'all for listening. This will be on YouTube. This will be on TikTok. So you'll get some inspiration one way or another. See ya.